All this is Dr. Mubeen Sayyid from drbean.com. Welcome to one more show. So uh, today we'll talk about this study. The study that we have is in vitro, that means in the lab, plus in vivo, but in mice. And is it a bad thing that it is in mice? There is a limitation of the mice platelets resemblance to human platelets. So that is something we should keep in mind. But otherwise, it should be fine. It's a similar thing as with human studies. The study says that it is possible that if when the injection of the vaccine is given intramuscularly, however, accidentally it is given out intravenously, then the vaccine could cause clotting. And that is the mechanism that they have discussed. And the proof for that is what they have discussed. They have dis discussed a case as well in which they say that the case of the clotting with vaccine was received. They ran labs on that person and they did not see any antibodies against the platelets, which tells them that this mechanism that they discovered afterwards may be the cause. So the the basis then becomes, the conclusion then becomes that it is something to do with not aspirating. That is a discussion. I'm going to share the study with you. I want to have a couple of comments as a summary point. Number one, this is not a new thing that adenovirus based vaccines are known to cause clotting. It's not new. Number one. Number two, the study shows that the platelets are activated platelets go to spleen where they are picked up, destroyed and presented, causing the uh, inflammation. This could actually be the other way around as well. And that is that platelets got clumped because of the antibodies. Then when they are passing through the spleen, spleen acts as a very big filter and spleen picked, picked them up and destroyed them. So it could be any of those. And then there are more mechanisms as well that show that antibody dependent clotting could be occurring even with the intramuscular injections. So is the intravenous the only hypothesis? I don't think so. Is aspiration a good idea? Sure. The one comment that I want to stress is that this may be a study which will be proved later on. But if this results in we now blaming the healthcare professionals who are injecting to say that the clotting occurred because they injected incorrectly, then that will be a sad outcome. And again, I'm not, I'm not defending healthcare workers or their mistakes, but I don't think that all cases of clotting are because injections are given intravenously. So with this, let's start. So I'll start you off with the <laughs> latest painting. So this painting's title is Returning from Oregon. So on the way back from my friends um, taking care of her, uh, there were many, many beautiful sights. And I thought this was very interesting. So here is the painting for that. So we're going to start here. Let me show you the links first. These links are present in the description as well. So here is the link to the study that we will be discussing. What they're saying here is we show that intravenous, intravenous but not intramuscular injection of CHADOX1, which is the um, code name for COVID vaccine from Oxford, and AstraZeneca triggers platelet adenovirus aggregate formation and platelet activation. After intravenous injection, these aggregates are phagocytosed by macrophages, and I'll explain, in the spleen and platelet remnants are found in the marginal zone and follicles. This is followed by a pronounced B cell response with the emergence of circulating antibodies binding to platelets. So that is their um, conclusion. This is another study towards understanding, again, 
Oxford vaccine induced immune thrombotic thrombocytopenia. Now, please remember that the other study is a conjecture as well yet for humans. This one is a conjecture as well. Here in this study, the authors are saying that when an intramuscular injection is given, the components of the vaccine cause local vasodilatation or increased in the permeability of the blood vessels, which in turn cause the, the adenovirus to leak into the blood vessels and start causing clotting. So this is a mechanism that is shown here with intramuscular. It does not need any aspiration or not aspiration. This is also an interesting article. This article is by the Massachusetts General Hospital in which they discuss the study that I showed. They discuss the study and say, and all of them say, even the authors of the study will discuss today, they say that we don't really know what is going on. But here again, based on this data, Greenacre and colleagues speculate that upon intramuscular injection, the vaccine and its components activate platelets and then they continue on. Important thing here to note is intramuscular. What I'm bringing to you in the summary is it's not necessary that all of this is intravenous. There could be intramuscular injection causing platelet activation, resulting in clotting. So we should not get derailed to always just think that if the injection was given correctly, for example, the injection is given, they have aspirated, they said, look, no blood, and then they injected. We should not now relax to say this person will not have clotting. We should still have the protocol. We should still be ready. We should still look after the patient. Then this is another uh, paper by <clears throat> AstraZeneca about the thrombocytopenia in the patients who receive it. And if Dr. Samina Chaudhary is here, in all of this discussion, I kept trying to figure out what about pregnancy, and it is always the same answer everywhere, and that says we do not have sufficient data for pregnancy, which is sad, but anyways, that is there. Then what I also did was I went through older studies before COVID to see adenovirus-based treatments, gene therapies, and their effect on thrombosis. So this is, look, this is 2012. And there is, there is a, an exhibition of clotting. Similarly here, this study is December 5, 2006. And thrombocytopenia has been consistently reported following the administration of adenoviral gene transfer vector. And again, this one could be intravenous, given intravenous. However, the mechanism that is shown here is something else. Here, the mechanism is that adenovirus is binding with the endothelial cell, causing local von Willebrand factor to be released, which then causes clotting. Then this is important to note, as we'll talk about spleen, we are slowly becoming doctors together. <laughs> so this is spleen. And so again, if you don't like Wikipedia, please read it from wherever you like. But this is the spleen and its architecture and function. This is another article related to spleen. This is from the NCBI bookshelf. And here are the functional pieces of spleen. So with this, let's start. So first of all, here is the summary of what they're saying. They're saying, so let's start from the left side. They're saying injection given accidentally intravenously. In the deltoid region, giving an intravenous injection is going to be a lot of hard work. But let's say that this happened. Accidentally, injection ended up in a vein. We know that blood from the vein from the upper regions will enter the heart from the superior vena cava. So just right heart will receive that blood. From the right heart, it will go to the lungs. From the lungs, after oxygenation, it would enter the left heart. From the left heart, this blood would then go to the body, including to spleen. Now, spleen is one of the largest, actually the largest secondary lymphoid organ, meaning this is primary lymphoid organs are lymph nodes and so on. This is a secondary lymphoid organ. Imagine 
in layman term, we can say spleen itself is a very big, is a very big lymph node. I know I'm wrong in saying that way, but we can, if we think about it this way, then we can understand they're going to be T cells and the B cells and the macrophages and the monocytes and all those filtration and immune system responses occur in spleen. Now, what is the mechanism? What are the authors saying? Authors are saying, imagine, start from here. They're saying that we observed in their experiments that when the injection is given intravenous, and they always express it this way, intravenous but not intramuscular, which tells me that there is a stress to say, hey, it is the intramuscular given incorrectly. Or, and accidentally, I don't think that there is any healthier worker who can be so sure that I'm doing intramuscular, I'm going to hit the vein. This has to be accidental. And even accidentally, it is going to be a very difficult thing to do. But let's look at the mechanism. So when the injection is given in the blood, in the vein, this injection, the adenovirus, is going to get stuck to the platelet. That is the primary mechanism that drives the rest of the thing. And the question you can ask now from those authors is, why would the adenovirus connect with the platelet? And they respond to that and they say, Adeno platelets, one of their job of platelets is to stick pathogens and haul them to spleen so that spleen can clear them out. So they can act as trucks, garbage trucks, which do not eat up the pathogen, but instead pathogen gets stuck on the surface. So here, this red one is the pathogen stuck on the surface. This green flag is a marker on the platelet. So in their, in their test, what they did was they had labeled platelets so that they could look, where, look at where the platelets are going. So this is a platelet has the vaccine stuck on it. So they say that normally the platelets that have pathogens stuck on them, they just circulate in the body and our spleen will pick up those pathogens and destroy them. However, in case of adenovirus, in case of this specific vaccine, when it gets stuck to the platelet, platelet becomes active. So they're saying that this vaccine has an on switch for the platelet. When they, that adenovirus attaches to the platelet, that causes the platelet to show its activation markers. Those are GP3B2A. So the uh, uh, healthcare workers here, professionals here, you know that when a platelet is active, it expresses these proteins in, on its surface. And those proteins are then going to help it to become aggregates and clump with other platelets and do their function. So they're saying this vaccine activates the platelet just by binding to the surface of it. Now imagine this activated platelet is running around in the blood and in that process, it's gonna end up in this spleen. And every blood circle includes spleen as well. So now hold on to this thought for a second. And now let's look at what spleen does. If I go here for a second, imagine spleen, this is, a part of the spleen. Imagine in a central part here, blood enters in the spleen. Around that blood vessel, the artery, is something that we say white pulp. Why is it white pulp? Under these, the microscope, it looks pale in color. That's why we call it white. It actually contains lots of B cells and T cells. B cells and T cell adaptive arm cells are here. Then more to the periphery of that unit is called red pulp. Red pulp is red because over there we are breaking the red blood cells and they're, they, they are old cells that are broken down and their enzymes and iron and those things are coming out. So that whole area looks red. There is bloodshed going on. What happens is in, in the red pulp are lots of macrophages and monocytes that are sitting there and hunting the old cells, old RBCs, broken down RBCs, the uh, pathogens that have capsules on them, and so on. And 
what they're saying is this uh, authors they are saying in this red pulp the macrophages or monocytes sitting there will attack these activated platelets and eat them up so hold on to this thought so now you have two thoughts in your mind one is that platelet is activated the second is now within the red pulp of the spleen that activated platelet has become eaten up by a phagocyte so now i'm going to go back here for a second so this is a, an artery that is entering in the spleen around the artery is the area that we say white pulp i deliberately let it be white here and in that white pulp just surrounding the blood vessel is the area of the tissue that has b cells in them so imagine in in layers just around the blood vessel are b cells then surrounding them are t cells then surrounding them is the layer of the red pulp that contains a lot of macrophages and monocytes continuing so what is then the final mechanism what really happens what happens is as the blood enters the white pulp from there the blood would enter red pulp and then from there it would get out of the spleen and what authors found something that was very interesting is that they said we see usually in normal healthy people or healthy mice we do not see any platelets in the white pulp we do not see any platelets in this blue area the white pulp instead they said we see a lot of platelets in the red pulp this is normal healthy circulation however in their study they found that this blue area the red pulp the white pulp had a lots of platelet pieces in there so they said where did these pieces come from why are they sticking here and they thought that the reason for that is that in the red pulp the macrophages that are sitting there these macrophages are arresting capturing the activated platelets how did they get activated because the vaccine was attached to them or the adenovirus was attached to them those activated platelet with the adenovirus on them got phagocytosed eaten up by the macrophages that live here in the red pulp and the monocytes then those macrophages and the monocytes so start from here they presented that broken platelet so they would eat up the platelet they would break it up into smaller pieces they would present the platelet on their surface so here our cell macrophages or monocytes are attacking our platelets why because they think these are activated platelets and we don't like it although we actually don't have such mechanisms that whenever a platelet is activated macrophage would just simply do not like it and say i'm going to destroy you but maybe it is possible so here we are the macrophage ate up the platelet that was active and had adenovirus stuck on it and it destroyed it once it destroyed it pieces of that platelet are shown in the white pulp to the b and t cells and we know the mechanism first the naive t cell will be activated naive t cell will then activate the b cell when the b cell is activated here so this all is happening in the lymph uh, in the spleen not in the lymph node then the b cell would start making antibodies these antibodies are against the platelet instead of against the adenovirus or maybe also against the adenovirus but important thing is they also are against the platelet when these antibodies are produced these will be sent in the blood vessel and when they are in the blood vessel these antibodies would attack other platelets present in the blood vessel and that would start causing clumping and this is what causes the clotting this is the mechanism that they have thought about or they they observed the platelets in the spleen so they thought this is the whole mechanism let's just very quickly review 
how they put it. So here, this is their summary. You can read that part. Here, the patient, so they start with the patient that here we saw a patient. That patient did not have antibodies against platelet factor four. That is our standard thought that we think that there are antibodies generated because of the reaction to the spike proteins or the adenovirus. Those antibodies are cross-reacting with platelet factor four. Platelet factor four is sitting next to the platelets, and then that causes the antibody and factor four complex to sit on the surface of the platelet, which activates the platelet, activated platelets clump with each other, that causes clotting. That is a normal mechanism that we think about. Here they're saying we saw a patient who did not have these antibodies, who did not have anti-PF4, platelet factor 4 antibodies. So they said, we started thinking that how is this person getting clotting when there are no antibodies against PF4? That is how it started. And so what they did was they said vaccines are routinely administered in intramuscularly, but here this is a case where they did that. They thought it may have been intravenous. So that is a discussion they did here. If you see here, an important thing that they are saying is intravenous injection of PBS. Imagine this is a um, saline part or the vaccine itself, BioNTech vaccine or heat inactivated adenovirus. So not the active adenovirus, but heat inactivated, that is destroyed adenovirus. All of these did not cause clotting, but active adenovirus caused clotting after one hour of the injection. Or they started doing this uh, platelet activation. Then these aggregates, so aggregates started forming, these aggregates had a short dwell time and rapidly disappeared from the circulation. So what they're saying is then they were eaten up by the macrophages. So the whole story lines up that you give the injection intravenously accidentally, that injection gets loaded or the, the adenovirus gets loaded on the platelet. These are very quickly cleared within an hour. Why are they cleared? Because macrophages ate them up in spleen. Then they are presented to the B cells, T cells, and then what would happen is that the antibodies are formed and those antibodies would then cause clotting. And if you see here, professional phagocytes, particularly red pulp macrophages, phagocytes activated or opsonites played out in the spleen and then they continue with that discussion. So this is the, um, the work that they did. I wanna read is a important thing here. Here we use in vitro and murine models of CHADOX1 and COV-19 vaccination. So they're saying that vaccination is in vitro, it's in lab, and the model is murine, it's mouse, not a human being, to show that intravenous injection of this vaccine triggers platelet adenovirus vector aggregate formation. Now, this part is very important. It is important to note that we used an animal model which inherently cannot fully recapitulate disease pathophysiology observed in humans. So they're saying it may be a mechanism, but we, we agree that this mechanism may not be possible for humans, and why not? Murine platelets do not express FC gamma receptors. What does that mean? So I'm gonna, this one paragraph is really important. And I have that written here. Let me explain what they're saying. What they're saying is this. It is possible that in us humans, our platelet has receptor for antibodies, which are called FC gamma receptors. And that allows an antibody to come and stick there, causing activation of platelet and then causing clumping. They're saying that the mouse model that we used, mouse platelets do not show or do not have this receptor. That means even if this was the mechanism, this mechanism is not observed in mice. Why? Because they just don't have this receptor. That means their learning cannot be used in humans 
fully because humans may be having antibody caused clotting and that may not be possible to prove with their study so then is their study valuable yes valuable to an extent to say if there is a chance of vaccine to be in the vein then maybe other than the antibody there may be this mechanism as well at play this is another maybe so let's go back to their the message here murine platelets do not express fc gamma receptors and therefore are not suited as a model of antibody mediated platelet activation that is the general mechanism that we think about when we think about platelet activation by heparin or by the vaccine that is upon the injection of heparin and platelet factor 4 polyanion antibody so what they're saying is if there were antibodies produced which would have loaded on platelets then in this experiment they cannot prove it or they cannot observe it because mice platelet do not have receptors for these antibodies what does that mean that means if in humans it was not about the intravenous injection then even then clotting could occur how is that possible so let me show you that mechanism we gave the vaccine intramuscularly. From here, the vaccine, the adenovirus, got drained in lymphatic to the local lymph node. Local lymph node has the same structure as you saw with the spleen in terms of the cells. So we have T cells, B cells, macrophages, monocytes. They are sitting here. They became activated. They created antibodies. These antibodies are now out in the blood. From there, in the blood, the platelet have the antibody receptor on them. Antibody got loaded or got bound to the uh, factor 4. That complex got loaded onto the or attached to the platelet, activating the platelet, causing the thrombosis. This whole mechanism cannot be proved or disproved by their observation. So does it mean that intramuscular injection, which is not accidentally gone into a vein, can cause clotting? Yes. So why am I stressing this? I don't want us to start looking at a squirrel and say, you know what? This is all intravenous. This is all incorrect healthcare workers injection. There is actually a possibility of correct injection still causing platelet uh, activation. And this is just one mechanism. This is one mechanism. There is another mechanism that I showed here, and that is platelet ac activation because of the VCAM1 expression. And what is that? If adenovirus enters the bloodstream, just like they're saying here, if it enters the bloodstream, instead of going to the spleen and getting eaten up by the macrophages, that adenovirus could directly attach with the endothelial cell surfaces, blood vessel cell surfaces, activate the blood vessels, cause them to release a lot of v, uh, von Wilbrandt factor, which is a clotting factor, and start clotting. That is another mechanism. A fourth mechanism I discussed before, and that is here, and that is that the components of the vaccine causing local inflammation, local capillary permeability, then local platelet activation, which becomes bigger. So uh, should, I, should we let our guard down by saying, oh, so we found out this was all about intravenous injection, incorrect injection, and now we give the correct injection, do the aspiration, and we are home free? No, we are not. So going back here, then they say, similarly, we did not observe delayed antibody-dependent thrombocytopenia after IV adenovirus injection in mice and did not detect platelet activation upon antibody binding because the model is different. So does that mean now we discredit the whole thing and say this is totally wrong? No, this is one mechanism we should keep it in our mind. I would say very rare. And then we, well, clotting is very rare too. But there are more mechanisms. So how do they then couch their own study? They say, nevertheless, our data provides first experimental support for the potential sequence of events that could lead to thrombocytopenic, thrombo, uh, thrombocytopenic purpura in some patients. 
Thrombocytopenia might be a result of accidental intravenous injection with ensuing platelet adenovirus aggregation, which in turn triggers platelet activation and subsequent splenic clearance. Now I want to talk about one last part and then stop. It's not necessary that the macrophages that are sitting in the spleen would not like an activated platelet and eat it up. So this is an activated platelet because it has the adenovirus on it. And it's not that the, the macrophage is just upset about that. Macrophage can actually pick up a platelet that has an antibody attached to it. This is called opsonization. An opsonized pathogen or platelet or any other tissue will be eaten up by a macrophage. So is it possible that there is actually intramuscular injection that then causes lo local lymph node reaction that four or five days later causes antibodies? Those antibodies get coated on the platelet or the platelet factor four, which then cause them to be opsonized, which causes the spleen to clear out those clumps. And that is why spleen is showing platelets instead that somehow macrophages are just upset about the platelets and they're clearing them out. So this may be a mechanism. This may not be a mechanism. I wanted to make sure that we look at it. So <laughs> here we are. Luffy just started putting in his um, <laughs> his message as well. And I'm seeing um, um, uh, there was a message, I think, from Denise, intravenous squirrels. Yeah, so <laughs> these could be intravenous squirrels. My point is not to discredit this study or something else. My point is to say, let's not just blame or put it on intravenous, accidental intravenous injections because somebody did not aspirate. Let's continue to make sure that we are ready. Or let's continue to say someone under 30 years of 50 years of age, woman, should not be given adenovirus-based vaccine. We should not use this study to say. You know what? Now we know it. So women, you should start getting adenovirus-based vaccines. Just ask them to aspirate. That's what I'm, I'm trying to convey. So <laughs> with this, uh, there was a question, uh, William. 15 years as an RN, I've done thousands of deltoid injections. I've vaccinated entire nursing homes year after years, and I always aspirate, never pulled blood. Do you feel this is a smoke screen? Yeah. So the, the only way for me to not just come out and say this is an incorrect message is to actually look at that message together and then offer that there are other possibilities. This is a, I just don't want that we start now accusing everybody whose loved one died of the clotting. They now start saying, you know what, this was the nurse's fault. I think that's a horrible thing to do. I have worked as well in the hospitals. I have not seen nurses pulling blood. I've seen them in my residency times injecting for my learning purposes during my ward rounds. I have not seen this happening. There are so many nurses I've talked with who said we have not pulled blood. So I just don't want us to be distracted. What is the right approach then? The right approach is to recognize that women under 50 years of age are at a higher risk because of the adenovirus vaccines. We have been seeing this way before COVID, and I'm showing you some uh, links here. And we should be ready. If we that is the only choice for a woman, then we should be ready to manage and support her to prevent clotting. And if this is not the only, only choice, then a woman should be informed that, hey, you can take something else. So that is my message. I'm going to stop here. Um, I'll come back for a chit chat. In the meantime, please do me a favor, like, subscribe, and share. Hold on to your questions. Please ask, them, ask me in the next topic, and we'll discuss it. Um, like, subscribe, and share, please. And if you want to support this work, there are links in the description. One is for the PayPal. The other one is to buy me a coffee. You don't need a PayPal with that. 
or you can be a patron. And thank you, everyone, for being a patron. Bye-bye for now.